If you want to know how to rust and weather toys and other objects, then this is the episode for you, because this is your Geek Fix. Last time on your Geek Fix, we used this Nuka Cola gun to show how to make toys and other plastic objects look more like hammered, old, antique metal equipment, and it turned out pretty good. Now, so far, all that we've done is just shown how to make something look like paint has gotten old and is chipping and exposing that underlying metal. That's what we've done so far, and, and how to get that texture, too, of that metal. But we could go a little bit further. We could try to make this look like it had rust uh, or had built up some type of calcium deposits or something, and that would be fine. Uh, but not for this gun. That's not what I'm planning to do with this gun. I did, however, have this other gun uh, that my son and I put together, and uh, I wanted to make it look like the actual gun, the an actual plasma gun. Um, when I got it from Spirit Halloween, these parts, for example, were straight, and we made sure that, like in the real one, they were bent backward. While this was still taken apart when I was painting it, I stuck a lot of LEDs inside, and that way I could create a little bit of a light show uh, like this. So, kind of neat. It can have different lights showing and light up a room, or you can have a, a, an emergency mode is what I guess you could say this is. I also noticed that in the game there was screws that stuck out the ends, so I had to add those in. I replaced some of the different piping with uh, some that I got from the dollar store. And I also wanted to make sure that some other things that were details on here looked about right. So, so using the same principles now uh, of the Nuka Cola gun, what we did with this plasma gun, we actually just under taped some things. So you don't have to pay too much attention on, on how tightly you cover an area or how well it's masked off. The big key is though on this one is uh, that we're gonna paint onto the area and we want it to look like it's it's kind of been faded off. Like over time, it's been washed off as well as chipping off. And so for that reason, the paint doesn't make it all the way out to the edges. It's, it's, it's a little bit fragmented and things like that. I used a sponge that I got my paint onto and just kind of went along and uh, painted it as best as I could and randomly as I could again also using a spectrum of colors so in this case I used some yellows and some oranges some reds and uh, went along and painted a little bit of each and then afterwards pulled off my masking and then tried to with a smaller brush add to it and it gave me a pretty good effect it does look like like it was once a, a painted a certain color and then it got scratched off or it's missing. And then I decided this one looked like it would do well with a little bit of rust. There are ways to actually create real rust on toys and it's a process. I will say for the two objects that we've done, I don't recommend it because you don't know what the reaction will be with the other paints that you've used and sometimes they don't work out so well. I, we're literally talking about a chemical reaction that we're shooting for and that you have to turn on and turn off. And so when rust occurs, a lot of times what happens is it turns into another metal because you're getting a combination of some things. You get some calcium that mixes in or you get some, some other things, metals, other metals in some cases, that mix in with that metal and then turn into another metal. And so sometimes we'll see what looks like copper coming through, little dots of copper, or we'll see little dots of what looks like gold, even though it's not. Um, that effect is not hard to make. You just get a can of that color of spray, and I almost spray it in the air, and then, and then just kind of move the object around in it so it's catching some of those particles in some places. And so you can see a little bit of those colors kind of falling down. The other thing that we can do is actually paint on some of that rust. And there's rust paints that we can use to do that. We also want to add 
a little bit of a wash, which means that we're going to be adding in some gunk to be able to make that look right. And then just painting it on. And it's just that simple. I mean, these are simple and fast ways to make something like this look older and look overly used. And, and suddenly, we have something that looks like an antique. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to uh, I'm create some colors for myself. This right here is actually a little bit of that color that I would want for some rust. I'll put that, stir that up and get it right here. Okay, and I've also used typically some kind of chalky colors to get certain rust colors as well. Maybe some, and maybe a little bit of a chalk chalk. This one right here, I guess. Okay. So here I'm using some different paints and chalks and pastels, powders, and that way we can mix together something that's going to have some a little bit of green and substance to it. So here I'm going through and I'm, I'm actually, you know, hitting some areas, some areas I might do it a little bit deeper than others. So that'll give us that rusty look we were looking for and still give us that three dimensional look too. The big key is too, wherever you can see the water would sit or where it would drain down, that's also where we wanna do a lot of that. So, you know, because there's a hole where water would build up, yeah, that's gonna be a big problem for, the, for that area, right? It gives it just a great, pretty great look. Um, and it really does make it look pretty rusty. This will just get a, bit, a little bit more age uh, to that paint that we've already put on. If something doesn't look right, just wipe it off and try it again. And typically I'd be putting on another color on here, but it happens to be the same color as the paint that is for the gun. So that orangish yellow color, typically if we were painting something, that's one of the colors we'd use for rusting iron. Uh, but the next thing that we want to put on is what we already talked about, which is that when iron oxidizes, it gets these golds and copper looks. So I'm going to take a little bit of those paints and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some toothpicks here and I'm going to paint those on wherever I've got a lot of my red. Okay. And you can also wipe it off a little bit if you don't like the effect. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good right there. And, and maybe a little bit of gold. Also in some of those areas. Dipping a little bit here, a little bit there. Again, we want this to be random. Ah, yeah. Maybe one more little treatment. And then, uh, yeah. And then we get another cloth and. That sticky sound is a good sound. Oh, oh. Yeah, I like that. That looks really quite good. So you can see here where the paint up here is nice and and then as we go lower it's wearing off and then the uh, exposure has led to more and more development of this reddish rust that's developing. So there you go, now we have this look that is very organic and, and kind of pretty. Uh, definitely looks very realistic and so 
I love how this paint over here also is is cracking open too. So overall, kind of a fun and, and neat process and didn't take us very much time at all. It's very simple. You can't go too wrong because the whole idea with this type of paint application is we're trying to ruin it. We're, we're, we're gonna continue to, to do things to make it look worse. The only thing you can do is make it look more like you want it to uh, by making errors and by doing things that you really shouldn't. So again, the key to this was to not follow the rules, uh, not follow the standards of practice for a paint application, and you get a really cool result. Let us know if you've done something like this or if you use anything like this. We hope you like this video. These are the kind of videos that we make. We'll have a lot more videos about paint applications and, and building things. Stay tuned for our future video when we'll show you how to make this brushed metal effect. Like, subscribe, comment below. This has been your Geek Fix.